This here is Odoo Cube's iWork GT. It is a 11 inch Windows 11 tablet that does have optional keyboards that you can get with it. Now it is powered by the Core i5 1135G7 with Iris Xe Graphics 80 executional cores. That is the same processor that they do use in Microsoft's Surface Pro 8. But that is also where the similarities end with this particular model here. Now this configuration that I have that was sent out to me from Aldo Cube has 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's very quick, the LPDDR4X, 4266 megahertz RAMs, really quick. It should aid that Iris Xe graphics and paired up with a PCIe 256 gigabyte SSD. The screen resolution is 2000 by 1200. And I don't know if it supports a stylus. I don't think it does because I did not get one sent out to me. So I'll be covering this in detail and give you my honest take on the iWork GT. This video is sponsored by the all new Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 14 with 3K screen, 11th gen Intel Core i7, and optional RTX 3050 Ti graphics. And it can be configured with Linux or Windows, dual boot. See the link in the description for more info. Inside the box, you'll find a power delivery power supply. So this is 45 watts maximum, a Type-C to Type-C cable. The iWork GT is just over 10 millimeters thick. It's about 10.5 millimeters, which is not bad considering it has a 28 watt chip in this. And it weighs almost 600 grams, but that is just the tablet. So if we add the keyboards, there are two styles. This is the cover one that props up. That then brings up the total weight to one kilo. And if you decide to get the heavier, which is like basically an iPad Pro style keyboard, then that is 1.24 kilos. I'll show you both of these keyboards now in detail. Now this one's what is called the light keyboard and it's made out of the synthetic material here. It has a touch pad that folds out. It's right here, it's a little bit hard to see. And I've used it a few times, it's not that great, the touch pad, but it of course is better than nothing. And here is our keyboard. So it does sit completely flat, the keyboard. And you'll see that the layout here, there are a few compromises with the arrow keys because it's only 11 inches, the tablet, so I was expecting this. Now you can see that we've got a lot of function keys there for, for example, home page up and down, end is there, print screen button. So when you put the tablet into it, you've got two options and that is the more upright and then slightly reclined, okay? We've seen this before with other tablets. So it simply just connects onto the back here. Magnets are very strong and there's that pogo port pin connector that does keep it in place where it should be. So the first level here is, you can see about there, which I find to be a little too upright. And then there's that level here too. Now the screen you can see is flickering away on camera. That's just because of my current brightness level. It's not doing that to me in person, but there is a little bit of pulse width modulation flicker. Once you're done with it, you simply just fold it all up like so, and you get this package, which is a little bit chunky, almost about 20 millimeters, but not as thick as the next keyboard. Now this one, I do like the design of a little bit better. Now, neither of them are backlit. So it just has the backing on it. The magnets here are quite strong and we get this little bit of an angle that we can tilt it back at. You can see right there, the Pogo port pin connectors, and it simply just lines up, sits on like that. And there's this gap. So that's like, an iPad Pro style keyboard. Now the thing with this keyboard is that you've got a limited angle that you can get it back. It's about there and I can put it more upright, but if you tap on the screen, it tends to bounce around a little bit more. So I don't really know if it's actually a better keyboard there. Now the keyboard layout here is pretty much the same. Uh, a few compromises, half arrow keys there that you can see. And the other thing too is the touchpad, pretty much just like the other one, the touchpad I don't think is really that good. It is semi-usable, but a lot of the times it's a bit laggy that when you touch it, it's unresponsive to find a little movements. And I find it frustrating. I would definitely be using a mouse with the touchpads on both of these keyboards. And then our tablet. So it does have okay sized bezels. I mean, they're not huge. They're not super slim. So we've got a HD camera right at the top here. 
there's two little gaps where we have microphones and this screen here is fully laminated, but it comes with this pre-applied screen protector. I just wanted to point it out because this screen protector isn't even the correct one because it doesn't cover the top here and there's a cutout for where there is no actual camera, not on this model. So to me, it's like an Android tablet screen protector they decided to use. So the frame around the outside is all made out of plastic. And I'll just get this screen protector off. And the back you can see there is a camera on the rear and we do have this material plastic. I believe it's plastic. I'm not too sure if it is alloy, but to me it's plastic and it scratches really easy. There's a few scratches on it already. And there's those poker pot pin connectors for the keyboards that I just showed you. They do label, as you can see, all of the ports here, just in case you were confused. They don't really need to do that, but it's something that a lot of these Chinese brands do for some reason. On the right side, we've got a USB 3.1, a combo jack 3.5 millimeter, micro SD card reader, and there is a speaker on the side, and also this is a vent for, well, sucking in fresh air. Then on the left here, we've got our two Type-C ports. So both of these are USB 3.1 Gen 2. They support power delivery, video out, both of them I have tested 4K 60, but we do not have, unfortunately, Thunderbolt 4, which this chipset does support. So the Core i5, 1135G7 does support Thunderbolt 4, but we don't have it. Speaker intake, and then a micro HDMI out, again tested, this is 4K60 is all I'm able to get from this. And then along the top here, we've got our exit vent, so there's a fan in this, it is actively cooled, and yes, you do hear it. When you're on the battery, the fan barely ever comes on, it's just on AC when you push it hard, it's a 25 watt part, so there is a bit of heat that's being generated, and then our volume up and down and power buttons made out of plastic. Along the bottom, well, there is nothing. Now the screen in this 11 inches fully laminated 2000 by 1200 is the resolution. Now it is fully laminated, so you don't have that ugly gap between it. Now there's IPS panel, brightness tops out at only 266 nits. For me, that's not good enough. It should be at least 300, especially being a glossy screen that is. So sRGB coverage here, is 98%, NTSC, that is 69%, Adobe RGB is 74%, and P3. So that's not too bad, but it's just that brightness. I really wish it was a lot brighter than what it is. So indoors, it's fine. Now, touch response and accuracy has been okay. I wouldn't say it is the absolute best. A few times I have had a little bit of difficulty. You can see selecting some things, there we go. And I'll just close this. It's taking me just a few attempts to do that. And I do find that that's quite frequent. Now we're seeing a lot of flicker here right now. What's going on? Well, that's to do with the brightness. When it is down on lower levels, it does exhibit pulse width modulation flicker. You can see quite bad there. But at higher brightnesses, it's not really doing it as bad. But I can still see it flickering a little bit. And then that touch accuracy Definitely needs work. I've jumped over to screen capture now because it's just a lot easier for us to see everything clearly and I've increased the scaling to 200% here. Now the BIOS has everything pretty much locked down to us so that's why I'm not showing you that because there's nothing of interest. It does support Windows 11 of course because it is running Windows 11. So it's good to see now we're getting products from China shipping with Windows 11. It's Windows 11 Home. Now you will notice that with the RAM, we do have the very fast speed. So I'm really happy about this because it's the top speed this Core i5 supports. And you'll see here that it's the 4,266 megahertz, although it does say 67 right there. So that's great performing. And if I check in the device manager, you'll notice too that our wireless is the Intel AX201. This is a very good wireless chipset. So it can get speeds of about 1.2, 1.3 with my router. And in theory, it's supposed to be able to do a lot better than that too. So very quick there when it comes to the wireless performance. Bluetooth 5.2 is on board. So in general, I won't show you documents, spreadsheets, stuff like that because it is a fast system, okay? The Core i5 that we've got with this, just go over a little bit, that it's a step down from the Core i7 version that I've reviewed in other laptops, but there's not too much of a difference. Four cores, eight threads. Instead of a 4.8 turbo maximum on the Core i7, this is 4.2. Two, and it's a 28 watts. And I've confirmed this with HW Info that yes, it is running 
28 watts there, which is what we want. And of course it has the Iris XE graphics. Now this has 80 executional cores. We get 96 with the Core i7 version. So minor difference. And that means, yes, the Core i7 is slightly better with the graphics, but not too much of a difference between them. So we do have an NVMe drive on board with this too. And these are the speeds. So not bad. I mean, it's not the fastest I've seen with PCIe. I mean, you can get a lot faster from some of the Samsung 970 Pros and stuff like that. However, for an included model, it's not too bad. The only issue here is 256 gigabytes, of which we get about 204 free on first boots and not a lot to play with and only eight gigabytes of that super fast memory with this too which is another area so i do hope they have a 16 gigabyte model with 512 gigabytes of storage would be really good with this kind of spec here so i have run a couple of benchmarks that i will show you i won't go too overboard with this because it does get a little bit boring but you can see here that it's performing as it should here with cinebench r23 we are looking at here just slightly less than that Core i7 model that I talked about, the 1165G7. Okay, not too bad there. Single core score as well is a bit slower there, but uh, it's still very good for a tablet as thin as this and 11 inches. We are getting reasonably good performance there out of it. And everything as mentioned, Windows just feels very quick and snappy doing everything here, not a problem bringing everything up. There's no lag that I can see. So I'll open CL score just over 15,000. Uh, it's a step up definitely from the UHD graphics we had on previous generations. So Iris XE, I'll get onto gaming soon and how it does perform, but a lot better than the previous generations. And our Geekbench 5 score. So this score here with the Core i7 version is just over 1,500 points. And we get around 5,600 off the top of my head here with the Core i7. So it's still very good performance uh, for what it has been in, an 11 inch tablet. Video playback now. So I have a couple of demanding files that I always test out. So this is first a 60 frames per second HEVC, Sony Swordsmith. And I'll just go into the middle here because it starts out in slow motion. See that took a few seconds and it's running well. Okay, so the Iris XE handles these kind of video files without any problem. Jellyfish, this is 140 megabits per second HEVC 10 bit. 4K, very demanding clip. And again, oh, nothing showing for some reason. That's a problem with the codec because I had to, well, I have to buy it. Is it not going to work for me? Okay, that's a codec problem, but it does work too as well. So any video files you throw at it, smooth performance on this. Iris XE does really well. Native decoding, of course, for HEVC and VP9. Now my Chrome test here in YouTube, I'm just gonna play this demo clip and I'll set it to the 4K preset with quality and I'll enable those stats here so we can see just how is this going to perform and will it be dropping frames, which it's dropped two of so far. Buffer health there's looking pretty good for my very poor internet connection that I do have. Okay, and it's a very slow start there, but look at this. Again, the Iris XE for video playback, very good here. So no problems with 4K YouTube and it will handle 4K 62, just fine. This spec, the 11th gen Core i5. Now if there's a real weakness that is super obvious, it is this right here, the webcam. Now you can hear what sounds like the fan because it is in fact the built-in fan. Because those two microphones are either side of the webcam, the fan isn't too far away from it. You can hear the fan and it scale up in the RPM through those microphones. And this webcam quality, well, it's pretty much downright terrible. So not good in the webcam department or the microphones if that fan is running because you're hearing it. I'm hearing a tiny little bit of bass coming out of those stereo speakers left and right, but they are simply not loud enough they should be a lot louder than this and gaming performance so with the iris xe graphics with 80 executional cores and 720p i thought that cyberpunk 2077 might actually get a playable frame rate here but as you can see no and we're using up all of the ram i think the ram is the issue here probably why it's so slow so this game's too demanding for it 
and just far too choppy. I could not play the game like this at only 12, 10 frames per second. Cyberpunk 2077, way too demanding. But with the Core i7 version of this chip, it did all right. It managed to get around 30 frames per second. But I had more RAM. I had 16 gigabytes. Grand Theft Auto 5 now performance. I do have it on 1080p and it is just the normal settings, like right in the middle with all the bars and everything. So it runs at about 40 frames per second. As you can see now that it's down to, well, 30 sometimes. So it can get a little bit choppy. Now it's not because of my capture card. I've actually tried it without the capture card, which is simply just all it is, is display out and it's just duplicating the display or even on the device, it makes no difference. It really is about the same. There could be maybe with me outputting via the Type-C port here, a two frames per second loss. So the performance at 1080p, uh, yeah, I was expecting better, I really was. I was expecting this to be at least about 50 frames per second, 40 frames per second, uh, and just be able to be a bit more playable. But it really is, as you can see, a bit of a choppy mess at 1080p. So you need to run it at 720p. So disappointing performance here from the Iris XE graphics. Thermals and fan noise. So this could explain why the gaming performance wasn't quite as I expected because it has hit 87 degrees Celsius, which in a thin tablet like this one, I kind of expected that with a 28 watt processor in there. So that means it did actually pull, yes, about 29 watts maximum, but it did trigger thermal throttling. So this is why I think maybe it throttled down a little bit on those clocks. So that's why the gaming performance, it just couldn't, the Iris XE graphics turbo as high as it would really want to because of those restrictions there with our thermals. So the fan noise, it has been slightly loud when definitely pushed. You hear that fan, not as bad as the webcam sample I gave you before, but it does get a little bit loud and it's definitely one of the cons that when pushed hard, you hear the fan. Light loads, it's quiet, but it does go up to the higher RPMs, but at least it does drop down. So if you wanted a completely silent tablet, unfortunately, this isn't it. Battery life on this tablet, just how is it? Well, I'm really struggling to get more than two and a half hours. That is because it only has a 29 watt hour battery in this, according to HW Info, paired up with a powerful 28 watt processor is not a good combination at all. So as I pointed out, the screen has, well, various minor, well, not really minor issues there. Well, one, the pulse width modulation flicker under 50% brightness is quite bad, at least on camera you see a lot of it. In person, at certain angles I can sometimes see it shimmer a little bit, and normally I'm not actually sensitive to that at all. Brightness tops out at only 266 nits, it should be higher than that. Touch accuracy at times is frustrating, not really that good. And then the webcam, wow, what an absolute disaster that is. Not only the webcam quality, but the microphones. The microphones pick up that noisy fan that's inside there, and I don't think there's any way around this at all, unless they were to move the microphone to a different position, but you're still going to get it. So the fan, yes, can be noisy when you push it very hard. The Iris XE graphics with its 80 executional cores paired with that faster RAM, I was expecting better results. And even though I repeated a lot of my tests there, I think it was because it did sometimes trigger thermal throttling, those temperatures were holding back the turbo speed on the integrated graphics here. So that's another area. A plastic frame around the outside, the keyboard's okay, but as I pointed out with this style of keyboard here, that it wobbles around a bit and tapping away at it, uh, it bounces back everywhere and not so great. The other style keyboard is certainly a lot better than this one. So is it a tablet that you should really be considering if you're after something like the Microsoft Surface Pro 8? Even though it's got the same chipset, I would definitely go for the Surface Pro 8. You have with that model, much better quality. You've got, of course, Microsoft support there. The hardware's superior, the screen's superior, battery life will be a lot better, and the performance too, I'm sure, is going to be a lot better than this. So now you know the full story here of AutoCube's iWork GT. My honest take on it here, I hope you did like it. If you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more up-and-coming videos. Bye for now.